Welcome to BergKnifeMaking.com. Today we're going to take a look at tricks of the trade of electro etching. Now this is not a complete how-to video on how to etch or how to electro etch. This is just the tricks of the trade that I've learned over the last few years. Electro etching is, is one of the aspects of knife making uh, that I've really kind of got a good grasp on. And just trying to pass some of those little tricks of the trade on uh, that may make it easier for others and, and certainly help their finished product come out a little bit nicer. So we're going to run through um, etching a couple of times in, in, in segments and I'm going to point out each little trick of the trade. I think you'll enjoy it. These, these are just examples of some of my etchings. Most of these were done over the past season. All right, so here we go. Um, a lot of times, if you're going to fully mask the knife uh, with the, uh, the self-adhesive vinyl, it's good to uh, know exactly where that vinyl um, stencil is gonna show up on your blade. I cut out all of my stencils on a Silhouette Cameo Craft Vinyl Cutting Machine. So what I do is I lay the blade on top and with a pencil, I can outline it and that way I can visually see that it's, that it's lined up perfectly. Then I use a scissor and I just cut out location notches. So I cut a little notch at the, uh, the very front edge of the blade, the back edge, and the, the bottom uh, back. And those three triangulation marks allow me to place that vinyl exactly where I want it on the blade. Now when you're transferring vinyl onto the blade, um, a lot of times if it's just one sticker, you might want to just move, move the sticker directly from the vinyl to the blade, but on a, on a full etch where, you, where you're completely masking the blade, you really want to use a transfer film. It's a clear transfer film. It's going to allow you to visualize right through that film and get the placement where you want it. So another trick of the trade is instead of using fairly expensive vinyl transfer film, uh, you can get down at the local hardware store uh, clear contact paper that's used on, on shelving. Much less expensive and I actually think it works better. So I can now place that vinyl directly exactly where I want it, looking through the clear contact uh, paper and seeing those, those cutouts the triangulation marks. And just be careful anytime you're peeling, whether it be the, the back of the vinyl or uh, the, the contact paper, just make sure none of the vinyl lifts up. When weeding the vinyl, and this is regardless of whether you're reading it, uh, weeding it once it's on place on the blade or if you're going to weed it uh, before you transfer onto the blade, um, I really like to use a 90 degree tweezer. It just seems to make life a little bit more comfortable, especially when you have uh, a lot of intricate weeding to do on, a, on any really detailed design. And these you can find, I just, I, I think I searched Amazon and came up with one. For really fine detail, it's always recommended uh, to do that fine line weeding once the vinyl is on the steel, rather than doing it prior and then transferring the, the, the vinyl decal. You just get a lot less uh, damage to the vinyl. And I'm able to achieve finer detail. For small letters, um, which can be a little bit difficult with self-adhesive vinyl, uh, one of the tricks is to make each one of those letters into a stencil, which means that the inside of the B is connected to the outside of the background. Same thing for the E and the G. It just gives you a little bit more meat for that stencil um, or those little pieces to stay in place. And that allows you to achieve some small quarter inch size lettering using a uh, a vinyl cutting machine. Next little trick of the trade is very simple, 
before you etch, I always cover the back of the blade with self-adhesive vinyl. I do this to protect the blade because it's going to be sitting on a piece of wood um, that's going to get saturated with the electrolyte solution and, you know, sooner or later, moisture and electricity are going to come in contact and you're going to end up inadvertently etching the back of the blade. Uh, the next trick is to mix your own electrolyte solution. So for uh, high carbon steel, just warm water and salt. For stainless steel, I found uh, that white vinegar and salt, a little bit more salt, uh, works just as good as the store-bought uh, stainless steel electrolyte solution. Saves you a ton of money, and more importantly, you don't have to wait for it to arrive from, from Amazon. Uh, the next trick is the uh, electro etching plate. I like to use a plate that is as large as the etch is so that you can etch the entire logo or design at a time, you know, completely each time you're spending, uh, you know, time etching. And of course, I etch in, in small intervals, 10 to 20 seconds, uh, letting it cool in between. Uh, sometimes if it gets real hot, I'll cool it in water and then go back. Most of my etches are, you know, last three minutes or so. The next thing is going to be to add texture onto your etching. Sometimes you want to distinguish, you know, between one area of etching and another. You can add a variety of different textures. This is with uh, gauze cling, and by leaving a moistened gauze and then etching over it, I'm going to basically imprint the texture of that gauze right into the blade. I've done this with burlap. Um, I've done it with paper towels. You get those little dots from the paper towel. Uh, all sorts of different material. Uh, to get a different texture on the etched portion of the blade. And you want to you want to leave the etching plate on long enough to really embed those lines. After etching, a quick cleanup with a 400 grit paper. You can also use acetone to get off any of the glue that remains from the self adhesive vinyl. And then you can really appreciate the, the texture to the etch and the two tone effect. The two, -to two tone effect is achieved just by leaving one area etching for a, for a longer period of time. All right, the next trick of the trade is fixing mistakes. Most times, you can actually fix your mistakes. Look where I'm pointing, that uh, forward edge, supposed to be coral. I used a paper towel uh, to try to get the, the texture on there. I laid it down and then I did my etching through the paper towel. And I just really was not happy with the result. Um, the, the, those little dots, um, which I thought looked really cool on the paper towel and, and would mimic coral, just didn't look good. Um, but I didn't want to throw out this knife. I'd already put a decent amount of work into it. So I can fix this. Um, because I'm using a craft vinyl cutting machine, I just cut out the area that I wanted to block. And then using the same technique, I applied it to self-adhesive um, transfer film, a clear transfer film, contact paper. And then I placed it perfectly to block everything that I wanted to protect. And what's exposed now is the area that I wasn't happy with. So now I can go back and re-etch this with a, with a different texture, maybe for a little bit longer, so it's a, a little bit more of a pronounced etched. I just went back to my, uh, my standby, which is the, the Curlex gauze. And it doesn't, it doesn't take long. It, you know, the majority of the time is spent, you know, cutting out the vinyl and getting it, you know, exactly where you want it placed on the knife. Then I can peel that, resist, that vinyl resist, peel my backing, which protected the other side. And in a minute, you'll get a look. Uh, basically saved the knife that would have otherwise ended up in the trash or being ground down. Anyway, that's it for this video. I'm going to show you a couple of the finished products. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I ask that you please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'd love to hear comments, uh, comments back. 
Uh, by all means, check us out on our Facebook group, Knives and Knife Making. Uh, you can even post pictures of your own knife builds there. And um, I'd like to invite you to check out the book that Jason Northgard and I put out last year called Introduction to Knife Making. Um, and that is available direct from Amazon.com. Of course, if you're interested in looking at any of uh, my other etched knives, or as I like to call them, functional metal art, um, you can check out my website, www.berg, it's B-E-R-G, knifemaking.com. Thank you very much.